Hello everyone and welcome. Today we have one terrifying paranormal amusement park story. This is kind of a long one, so strap in. Without further hesitation, let's begin. Adventureland's Haunted Tour is a bit of a local legend in my town. Even though I live in a fairly small city, Adventureland has kept us on the radar since the early 60s. And even today, it continues to be a popular amusement park as well as a tourist attraction. Adventureland's Haunted Tour, however, only survives in a handful of old newspaper articles and rumors, spread from one generation of kids to the next. I only ever seen the ride once while it was in operation. It was kept in a building that was decorated like a haunted house. Fake spiderwebs, skeletons, and ghosts adorned the hallway where everyone waited in line. Halloween music played from the speakers on the outside, and many people who wrote it compared the haunted tour to the haunted mansion at Disneyland. My family visited Adventureland when the ride first opened. I was around 8 or 9 and very sure, so I didn't get to go on the ride that summer. It was a very popular attraction among my older brother and his friends, who must have ridden it a hundred times during that year. I was consoled by my parents, reassurance I would certainly be tall enough to ride the haunted tour next summer and that coupled with the many other rides my mother took me on were enough to satisfy me. A newspaper article at the end of August brought me the news that I would not be getting the chance to experience Adventureland's haunted tour. Despite its popularity and growing reputation, the ride was closing after barely five months of operation, citing maintenance issues and technical problems for its reason of shutting down. After hearing this, I was practically inconsolable for that whole week. All that time I spent measuring myself, hoping that I'd grow those last two inches before the summer was over, was now in vain. Many others were also upset that the haunting tour was closing. From what I heard, it was actually a pretty scary ride. Not that my brother would ever admit it. No one was ever sure why the ride closed. It was then that rumors began. The most widely accepted was that the first time the ride opened, a kid was killed on it, straight up decapitated. Supposedly. His head was left there the whole summer, and everyone assumed it was a prop. Oh man, I can't even begin to count how many times my brother and his buddies would try to scare me with that. While this was the most popular rumor, it was far from the only one. The strangest story I've heard about Adventureland's haunted tour was that occasionally kids would just vanish. They'd get on a ride and wouldn't be there when it stopped, never to be seen or heard from again. I never believed a second of it. My friends and I frequented Adventureland for years, but the haunted tour soon made its way in the back of our minds. New and exciting rides seemed to pop up every summer, and for a while, it seemed the whole town stopped thinking about Adventureland's haunted tour. Hell, I almost forgotten about it until one Friday night. My two friends Matt and Claire were watching a movie and sharing a pizza with me. My parents were out and my brother had gone off to college two years before, so we were alone. I was 16 at the time, and just old enough to believe I was an adult who could take on anything. We were sharing stories about middle school, and Matt brought up the ride, along with the rumors surrounding it. Hey, do you remember that old ride from when we were kids? Haunted... Uh, haunted something. Adventureland's haunted tour, I said. The memories of that year flooding my mind at once. God, that was the biggest news we've ever heard when it closed. I'm still pissed I've never got to ride it. I only wrote it once. The line was always so long. From what I remember, it definitely lived up to the hype. Matt down a third of his soda in one big gulp before continuing to devour his pizza. It wasn't until Claire's confused looks that Matt and I realized she hadn't moved here until the 6th grade, long after the ride was shut down and forgotten. Adventureland's Haunted Tour was our version of the Haunted Mansion. It was only open for one summer and it was the only thing anybody talked about. If you can imagine it, I was even shorter as a third grader, so I never got to go on the ride, I had explained. If it was so popular, then why did it close? Claire asked. Finding a flashlight on the table, Matt held it under his chin and spoke in a low, ominous voice. It was a dark and stormy night long ago. As a young boy was on the ride, the car took a sharp turn and his head was cut off by one of the props. The ride had only been open for a few weeks. And the park didn't want to deal with a story like that, so they ditched his body in one of the displays. Nobody noticed until the end of the summer. Some say he still haunts the park to this day. Cut that shit out. I grabbed the flashlight out of his hands. He laughed. What? That's the only proper way to tell the story. 
he protested. What happened to the riot after Adventureland shut it down? Claire asked between mouthfuls. I don't really know. I think that the building's still there. It's probably in a close section of the park, Matt shrugged. Why don't we go check it out? Claire continued. Matt and I fell silent because the most surprising part of that suggestion is that neither of us had entertained the idea before. The next thing we knew, we were making the 15 minute walk from my house to Adventureland. It was November, so the park was closed, and there was almost no chance anyone would be there to catch us. Hopping the fence was easy, but we knew locating the haunted tour would be another story. None of the current maps of the park would have the closed areas on them, which meant we were relying on Matt's and I's memory alone. After about 30 minutes of aimlessly wandering around, we somehow managed to find an old walkway that was boarded up. The wood was old enough that Matt, Claire, and I were able to pry it away from one of the corners without damaging it too badly. This was before security cameras were on every corner, so if we didn't completely destroy something, no one would know that we were there. The three of us finally found the building, and we were able to get the heavy doors open. The fake spider webs were now accompanied by real ones, and a thick layer of dust made the interior look even older. Everything seemed so still and undisturbed. A part of me was excited I finally got to see the ride. But another part of me was still anxious that someone would catch us in here. Matt came up behind me and tapped my shoulder with a plastic skeleton's hand. The slender, bony fingers that I saw out of the corner of my eye made me jump out of my skin. And I'm not proud to say that I screamed. After telling him exactly where he could stick that skeleton, I made my way over to the controls. I brushed away a thick layer of dust and grime to reveal the colored buttons beneath. I decided to push a few, and with much contempt from the aging machinery, the ride roared to life. The lights flickered on, and the few bulbs that weren't either broken or burnt out illuminated the ride. The speakers blared out creepy orchestra music, and the carts began to slowly move along the tracks. Should we get in? Matt asked, now significantly less cocky than when he was messing with the props. You said you always wanted to ride it. Claire walked over to the car and sat down. There was only room for one person per car, which must have been the reason for the perpetually long wait times while the ride was in operation. I climbed into the car behind Claire. Matt cast me a nervous glance as he made his way to the car behind me, hoping maybe I would change my mind about wanting to ride. Sighing, he turned the flashlight off and got in. As we approached the beginning of the hallway, the restraints locked into place. With the exception of the outside of the building, Adventureland's haunted tour held up shockingly well. I couldn't find any malfunctioning props. Even the strobe lights and the thunder sounds that went off in the background of the ride still worked. There were a fair amount of ghosts that came down from the ceiling, stopping just short of the top of the car. That startled me. The ride would have scared the shit out of me as a kid. Then, the lights went out, and the car screeched to a halt, jolting me forward. Knowing that this couldn't have been part of the ride, I turned on my flashlight. We hadn't been there so long, so it would be easy to follow the tracks back to the entrance. Unfortunately, as much as I tried to pry up the bar in my lap, it wouldn't budge. I tried to call it for Claire and Matt, but I was met with only silence. The ghosts and skeletons on the ride looked significantly less frightening when I could see the wires. But I was still freaked out because the ride hadn't started back up again. My heart skipped a beat when something moved on my right. I couldn't see anything, which added to my heightening paranoia. A loud crash erupted from behind me, and I frantically spun around in my seat, craning my neck as far as I could, and I could still see nothing behind the back of the car. Matt, did you get the bar up? No one responded. It was then I realized, in my panic, I had dropped my flashlight onto the track below, far out of my reach. When I turned back around, I could just make out a dark figure about 10 feet in front of me. Relief immediately flooded over me. Oh, thank God. Hey Claire, can you get me out of this damn thing? The figure remained still and silent. Claire? Matt? My heart pounded and the figure still had not moved a bit. I futilely tried again to reach for my flashlight. A wave of dread washed over me and settled to the pit of my stomach. There should not have been another person on the ride with us. When I looked at it again, it was two feet closer to me. Matt! Claire! Come get me out of here! I couldn't tell what was in front of me. The figure was tall and lanky, but something seemed off. 
It seemed human. But in a way, it just didn't. It almost looked like a living shadow, and as it got closer, I could hear the noises it made, which were almost as unnerving as the thing itself. Its sounds reminded me of static from a radio, and they didn't seem to be coming from its mouth. I heard hissing all around me, and it grew louder as the creature got closer. Even though the figure was about three feet in front of me, the darkness of the corridor made it impossible to make out any of its features. I don't think it ever stood completely still. It continued moving towards me, though very slowly, unless I looked away. Then, it would cover more ground than should have been possible. At this point, I lost my mind. I began screaming, hoping that someone would hear me and come help. I bent down over the side of the car, fingertips barely brushing the ground as I tried to find my flashlight. I forced my eyes shut and was determined to keep them that way, even though it made my search infinitely more difficult. I could almost feel the figure moving towards me, and I could sense it right in front of the car. The hiss of the static had grown louder, blocking the sound of my frantic cries. My breath began to catch in my throat and my heart was beating so hard I could feel it in my fingertips. I knew the creature was there, and I was so goddamn afraid of what it might do to me. I imagined its face leaning over me, and its hands hovering mere inches above my skin, so clearly that I was convinced it was happening. I stretched and strained my body against the restraints of the car, and at one point I thought I might dislocate my hip, and I fought against the bar. Finally, my fingers hit something cold and metallic. I was able to get my hands around my flashlight after many failed attempts. With tremors racing up and down my arm, I clicked the flashlight on and shone it at the creature. I eventually managed to open my eyes, and when I did, there was nothing in front of me. I looked around the hallway and I was met with the same emptiness and silence. The ride grown to life and resumed its solemn progression forward. I kept my light on, each clap of thunder from the speakers jolted through me, and between the flashes of strobe lights, I was worried that I might see that thing again in the shadows. The ride went on forever, and I had lost track of all time when I finally reached the last room. It was similar to the lobby, and the tracks approached two large doors with the To the Land of the Living painted across them. I assumed this was the exit, back to the lobby. The ride stopped again, and the lights shut off. I kept my flashlight fixed on the doors. Paralyzed and nearly catatonic, I was too afraid to move the beam into the darkness, not wanting to see what I would find. My fear was eased slightly when the continuation of the thunder and lightning effects assured me that this was actually part of the ride. Speakers behind me crackled, and a low voice seemed to be speaking over the dull roar of static. Just remember, you can never leave. The words slithered up my spine, and my entire body got clammy and rigid. There was a part of me, most of me, that worried that the doors would never open, that I would be stuck in here forever. The doors did eventually swing outward, and the car returned to the lobby. As soon as the bar in my lap went up, Claire yanked me to my feet before I even had the chance to jump out of the car. She looked just as shaken as I felt. I turned around and saw Matt's car come through. Empty. The bar in his car was sticking straight up in the air as soon as it arrived. You think he managed to pry it up? I asked, and the sides of his car seemed to bend outward as if he ripped out of his seat. I told myself it was warped with age, and that it was like that when he got on. I didn't believe it. Claire's response only confirmed my suspicions and worsened my fear. If he did, then where'd he go? Claire and I both refused to walk through that ride to look for him but we shouted his name from the relative safety of the lobby. With each minute that passed, we felt more unwelcome there. I knew that he wouldn't have left without us. I grew more nervous each minute that Matt did not emerge, knowing that I could not live with myself for having killed my best friend. Gradually, the lights above us became brighter, which only accentuated the darkness of the hallway. The cars continued to move along the track with no sign of Matt and I felt more anxious as each empty car passed by. Claire and I heard something from within the ride. It was quiet at first, but we were soon able to hear it clearly. Static came from both sides of the track, and it was coming towards us. Now, I'm not proud of what we did next, and years later, it still sits in the back of my mind. Claire and I turned and sprinted out of the building. I was certain she must have seen the figure too. 
We ran blindly through Adventureland, frantically pursuing the exit of the park. In the parking lot, my ankle went sideways in a pothole, and I slid across the pavement, taking all the skin off my knees and elbows and sending shooting pain up and down my limbs. I had no time to be concerned about my injuries, because I swear to god I heard static roaring in my ears right behind me. Claire helped me to my feet, and we continued our escape. I'm no means athletic, but I definitely was that night. I don't think any human being could ever run as fast as we did then. We did not stop until we were behind my locked front door, and even then, we didn't feel safe. Claire and I never talked about the ride to anyone, nor did we share our individual experiences with each other. We knew that it was better to forget, though neither of us would ever be able to. I never went back to Adventureland, and today I'm reluctant to take my children to amusement parks. I still look for Matt, scouring newspapers and the internet for any sign of activity but I have come up empty-handed each and every time. I also have not found any information about the figure I saw on the ride, and to be honest, I don't want to. I think now I have accepted that my own idiotic curiosity is the reason my best friend went missing, and is most likely dead, but I never will be able to completely recover from it. I have learned to stay away from Adventureland's haunted tour, or any other rides like it. To this day, I can't hear static without fearing for my life, because I know whatever was with me on that ride has to be somewhere. Are you still here? If you are, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please tell a friend and possibly subscribe. I'd love to hear your comments as well. So you guys stay safe, and until next time.